Good day everyone and welcome to the next module in our distance learning program that we run in conjunction with AGRA and Venture 37. My name is Nolene Mostert and I'm the communications manager at Villa and we're very proud to be associated with this project. Today we're going to look at the non-chemical control of full armyworm and the potential options that we can use. Uh, for this presentation we've got Professor Johnny van der Berg, manager of the Integrated Pest Program at the Northwest University. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. Good day, everybody, and welcome to this presentation uh, of non-chemical control measure. And I'm specifically going to deal with one single system, the push-pull habitat management system, which I'm sure many of you have heard about and which I've been involved with since 1994. Now, this push-pull system qualifies as one of the non-chemical control options, about which we uh, also had a long presentation, which also falls into uh, module five in, the, in, this section, in this series of fall army worm training models. So the key messages, and you'll see uh, overlap between what I say here and the other lecture uh, presentation, about non-chemical options. The key messages are that a healthy and biodiverse crop field usually have lower pest pressure. Agroecological farming makes the environment unfavorable for pest, and you'll see why I say that today. And then more specifically related to the push-pull system are trap crops and intercrops, which also lead to suppressed pest numbers. Now, the push-pull system has two main components. That is trap cropping and intercropping. A trap crop works as follows. The moths prefer the trap crop for some reason. It smells nice, usually. They prefer the trap crop to lay their eggs on instead of on maize. And the trap crop, if it's tall, like napier grass, for example, can also have a barrier effect. And, complicate the host and it complicates the host finding process that the moth goes through whilst he's searching for maize. The other component of the push-pull system is intercropping. Now, certain intercrops may release a repellent smell that push moths away from a maize field. It disrupts their behavior, in other words. The intercrop provides habitat for beneficial insects. And it may, some intercrops, release a smell that attracts small parasitic wasps that parasitize pest eggs, for example. So it's two component, but it, components, but they have together a very complicated effect, which eventually results in pest suppression in the long run. Now, this is a simple example of a push-pull system in Uganda. It looks like any other maize field, but it's surrounded by a track crop. And it is, uh, there's an intercrop of desmodium, and it can also be another crop. We'll get to that. But this is what, at this stage of this presentation, when you give it to farmers, at this stage, you should tell them this is what gonna, we're going to speak about. A system such as this can benefit the farmer a lot because he will most likely have reduced infestation levels of fall armyworm, as well as the two other very important maize pests, the Kailu borer and the African stem borer Bujola fusca. So this is what you show and you tell them this is what we're going to discuss today. This is a graphical presentation of how the push-pull system works. In the center, we've got maize plants, which is the crop we want to protect, the main crop, and in between that, we've got an intercrop. Now, around that field, uh, you see a trap crop, and the yellow arrows show that moths are attracted to the trap crop. The red arrow shows the moths are pushed away, that's where push, the push component, and the track, uh, the intercrop that pushes away the moths also 
attract natural enemies. So the push-pull system means that we are pushing away the moths of the pest and we are pulling them towards the trap crop. That's where the push-pull system uh, got its name. And you'll remember this slide from the module on pest biology. And I want to repeat things here with that is important for farmers to understand. Since they now have some idea of the biology of the pest, you can tell them the following. The push-pull system makes the environment unfavorable for the pest. Why do I say that? Well, firstly, the moths struggling to find the maize plant and you are kind of manipulating or cheating in the system. You are repelling them from the maize plant. The eggs are influenced in the push-pull system because the moth lays uh, eggs on a trap crop, but that trap crop is bad for the pest. The pest cannot eat it as easily as soft maize tissue, and many, many of the worms that come out of the eggs will die on the trap crop. We also kill it and uh, we call it an attract and kill strategy. And the larvae that uh, are there in a trap crop mixed cropping system such as in a push-pull system also encounters the diversity and natural enemies that are in that diverse system. So the push-pull system influences the whole biology of the pest and that's why it's such a powerful management strategy. Now this is a slide that shows the life cycle of the Kailu border that most farmers will also know, the stem border, and it works exactly the same. The moth is attracted to the trap crop, the eggs are laying, laid there, and when the worms come out, they cannot feed and survive on the trap crop. And that is a message that, that you should convey to farmers to tell them that the trap crop suppresses the pest like this. And again, these non-chemical methods will not result in a farmer observing dead larvae in plants or on the ground or somewhere. It has got a suppressive effect, which you don't even notice is happening. Now, this is a real life picture of the push pull strategy in the field. Now, I've got to start off by saying that this system, which is world renowned, was developed by scientists at the International Center for Insect Physiology and Ecology, ECP, in Kenya. And I'll refer a lot to their uh, research and the material during this presentation. So in this picture, you see the maize main crop. There's an intercrop of desmodium that repels the pest. And you see on the perimeter of this field, the trap crop, which is present. Now, this is a very clean and very neat setup on a experiment station. And that's not how it looks at farmers fields but we'll get back to that. So in principle, there's a maize field in the middle surrounded by a perimeter crop, uh, crop that pulls and traps the moths to lay eggs there. And then the other component is the push component, the intercrop in between maize rows that pushes away the moths. They don't like it there and then they fly around and they smell the trap crop, and then they lay their eggs there. So which push components and pull components can be used? Well, for the first one, we know that green leaf desmodium is a plant that emits certain volatiles that repels moths from the maize field. But it's also uh, been reported that beans can do the same uh, has the same effect on moths. So any intercrop for that matter will have an, a, dis, a disruptive effect on the moth that's searching for a maze and it has kind of an, uh, a, a push effect. The pull crop or the trap crop is uh, either brachiaria grass and napier grass, which I'll talk a little bit about later. This is an example of a uh, brachiaria grass. You can see it looks different than on an experiment station, 
but very nice growth of Brachiaria grass, providing protection as a jack crop against moths that want to lay their eggs on the maize in the background. Here's another example of napier grass. It grows much taller. Uh, there's a lot of maintenance required. It's, it's labor intensive to a certain degree because the farmer must chop off the grass at a regular intervals, but that has a benefit as well, which I'll talk about more at the end of this presentation. And this picture was taken in Western Kenya, and here you see with his back towards the camera, Dr. Zia Khan from ECP, who was the person responsible for development of this strategy. This picture shows you an additional benefit, which we often forget when we talk about fall army worm and stem borders. This picture, uh, the, the flowers on the left hand side of this picture are striga parasitic plants that grow on the roots of the track crop. In this case, the track crop was sorghum. Now it grows to the same extent on the roots of leaves and in many areas in Africa, maize can hardly be produced where this parasitic weed is present. But in this experimental plot on the right hand side of the picture, you can see a desmodium intercrop, to, intercrop together with a maize. And over time, the desmodium presence in the field resulted in a near extinction of striga in that side of the plot. So the push-pull system where desmodium is used does not only protect the maize against stem borers and fall armyworm, it provides an additional effect that it can provide protection or it will provide protection against the parasitic weed such as this one. But of course, this will only apply where the weed is a problem, where pest pre weed pressure is high and so on. This is part of research that I conducted in a humid subtropical region in South Africa. And I was evaluating the push-pull system amongst farmers in this area. And the farmers did not want to adopt the push-pull strategy in full because they wanted to cultivate fields by means of tractors and so on. So what we did was plant napier grass only on the contours between these small fields and not as a 100% perimeter crop around the field. And there was also no intercrop. And many studies have shown that intercrops such as this one, uh, track crops such as this one can re lead to significant reductions in stem water pressure on maize. And I'm sure that this will also suppress fall army worm numbers over the long term. So this is one of the components of the push-pull system. It's only the pull or the track crop present, but it can result in a reduced infestation level of 20 to 30 percent when a farmer has this compared to a neighboring farmer without these simple rows of napier grass next to his field. A track crop next to a maize field is an extension of the field margin. And I said in the other presentation on non-chemical methods that diverse field margins and contours provide habitat for beneficial insects such as spiders and earwigs, etc. And that is also what the push-pull system's trap crop and intercrop does. It creates a unique environment where beneficial insects can survive. There's a lot of organic material uh, within the maize field itself. There's a lot of habitat in the trap crop where spiders and predatory beetles can hide. And that is what farmers should be taught because that biodiversity supplies, provides a lot of ecosystem services in terms of um, crop protection. So we come back to this slide and I hope that the farmers will, you can ask them, can they see the different components here? You can prompt a discussion. And um, what do they like and the, what do they not like? Yeah, is it practical for them under their specific farming condition to, to adopt this push-pull habitat management strategy. 
And I'd like to show you a few pictures of how this looks. This is, again is an experiment station, a very neat setup with rows of sorghum with brachiaria grass. And the particular specific brachiaria variety is the cultivar mulatu, which is used as the border crop. Um, this is a sorghum field, which is also attacked by stem borers and fall armyworm with an intercrop and a perimeter crop that provides all the protection that is needed. Another plot um, is a very, very well maintained plot with brachiaria grass and desmodium as the intercrop that has these many benefits because the desmodium also fixes nitrogen in the soil, it improves plant health, and you can re uh, tell farmers, ask them, do they remember that the nitrogen fixation by legume plants improves nitrogen content in the soil and it makes the plants stronger and stronger plants, healthier plants can tolerate more damage. So it's a whole systems approach um, if you do this, if you apply this strategy. What do you do with all the green material that can be harvested from whether it's native grass, like in this case, a very long, very nicely grown napier grass border next to a crop field. This farmer practices crop rotation. We've got this crop and the next crop will be maize. So what do you do with all these green material? Is brachiaria grass or napier grass? Farmers can make a lot of profit and get lots of benefit from this. Number one benefit in certain farming systems is that there's an abundance of forage for animals. For dairy cows, for dairy goats, there is a permanent source if the farmer maintains the perimeter crop very well. I have also observed uh, situations such as this where farmers exchange napier grass cuttings as animal fodder for kraal manure from animal farmers. And no money changed hands under these conditions, but everybody benefits. And this picture at the bottom shows a farmer that harvested napier grass and is selling it to a person who owns a dairy cow. So there are so many additional economic benefits when farmers adopt this system. But I want to emphasize the following. Not all these methods, trap cropping, intercropping, and specifically the complete push-pull system is practical in all farming systems. The application of this push-pull strategy depends on the farmer's situation um, and agroecological zone, because these crops usually grow, these trap crops and intercrops usually grow better when it's uh, high rainfall areas. And if the farmer would plant napier grass, for example, um, and he doesn't have an offset for that, there's no animal factor in the farming system, that might not be practical. So you can ask farmers, do you think this is practical? Will some of these components work in your particular uh, setup? And get them to discuss this. And as I said in the beginning, we cannot uh, do this without referring to the work that ECP did on this. And there are two links to an excellent website on the push pull system. And this website is also maintained by ECP. Thank you very much.